Hey squaddies and welcome to Thriving with the Sussexes. My name is Deanna and I'm here to report on all things Sussex. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Now let's get on with it. Hey squaddies, good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are or whenever you're listening. Hello. I wanted to thank you all for your support to the channel and also interacting with you all at the comment section or the community tab. We are now up to 971 subscribers. Um, we're so close to that 1,000. And um, I had no idea how significant having 1,000 subscribers meant. Because I always, you know, I'm a, I'm a watcher of the YouTube uh, channels. And oh my gosh, I just realized I have this Animal Crossing game in the background. And I haven't muted it. Uh, it's the end of my work day, so <laughs> I usually play Animal Crossing like right after. Uh, it helps me unwind and, you know, I, I either play Animal Crossing or just like, just, just turn everything off. And I have my fan on it <laughs> in the background as well. Oh, Lordy, whatever. <laughs> um, it's not uh, it's not really a hot day today where I'm, where I live in, in my home state. Um, so it's, it's really nice. It's a beautiful sunny uh, 72 degrees at the time of this recording. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really comfortable. I have the windows open and have the fan blowing in the background. And I'm still in my office, but I'm sitting on the couch. So I'm just comfortable now. I'm not even at, like, at the desk or anything. <laughs> Answering calls or, or like, taking messages or whatever or taking notes. I'm relaxed. I'm just here to record this amazing podcast and giving my thanks to you all and appreciation uh, to the channel. Um, I had no idea how significant a thousand subscribers meant because I'm a watcher of the YouTube. I'm a viewer first and foremost, and I like and I follow several channels of different dimensions of YouTube. So many, but I've follow so many channels and I've seen like people celebrate like we have a thousand subscribers you know like actually I follow a channel who grew so quickly for another dimension of YouTube <laughs> um family channel where they're like we have 500 subscribers and um now we have a thousand subscribers and now they, they're like up to like uh, like about like 10 million subscribers I know I would never get to 10 million subscribers I'm not even <laughs> that's like that's yeah that's like that's impossible but i am grateful for the 971 subscribers i have now and i'm so grateful and happy that you are enjoying the content um and the videos and my information and my monotone voice i think my voice is monotone i'm not sure some people feel that way i guess about their own voice um at least that's how i feel like i'm a bit insecure about it but i'm so grateful that you all appreciate it and you all enjoy the videos and the music i love the music uh all the music that i use in my videos are um are from extremely talented artists i i actually prefer a lot of these artists to the mainstream artists not because you know they're royalty free or anything and you could pretty much play these on any youtube video or whatever but i just i really i respect them the music sounds wonderful i love music so i always add music to my videos for that reason I don't want you all to just listen to my voice speak. I think my voice, like I've mentioned before, is, is pretty monotone and I think you will probably fall asleep to it or maybe you haven't already even with the music. I'm not sure. So <laughs> uh, moving on, um, would I love to have a thousand subscribers? At first, I didn't really care, but actually I, I do. That would be great. That means there's more squatties that can listen to you know my point of view on things because i've noticed 
plenty of other amazing channels I listen to as well and I follow just like you all but yeah it'd be cool to have you know a thousand subscribers <laughs> but yeah I love that you subscribers are watching and now that I know how to use this app a little bit more I also see that many of you other viewers, you lurkers out there, aren't subscribed to the channel. <laughs> I mean, you're already at my home, so why not just step on in? <laughs> Stepping in by hitting that subscribe button. And um, you don't even have to hit the bell. You can just hit the subscribe button. It takes less than a second. At least to me, it takes less than a second. I just click, I click. And you get to also interact you know, in the community tab. So if you haven't already or you've forgotten to, please subscribe, please. <laughs> and speaking of that, that poll was so helpful. I'm going to start calling Harry the Ginger King. He's a superhero in my book. And like all superheroes, they go by many names. The Ginger Avenger is the most well-known name, but he's called many other names and many other regions and galaxies out there so <laughs> you get what i'm saying right <laughs> and it's kind of like how all or most of us have other names or nicknames so why not i'm gonna also call him the ginger lion so prince harry the ginger lion because he is a king and lions are kings right so and he acts like a king he presents himself like a king <laughs> so thank you to all who've commented and participated in the poll i'm definitely doing another one soon it was so fun for me and you know i never thought doing things like that would be fun so now i'm gonna do more <laughs> okay now into this podcast I thought our Prince Harry, aka the Ginger Lion, was done with his role in visiting the great continent of Africa? Think again. Prince Harry also made a stop to the great country of Rwanda as the president of African Parts. He also met with Rwandan President Kugami. African Parts collaborates with governments and local communities to take over the complete responsibility for the rehabilitation and long-term management of national parks. Harry became president of the nonprofit conservation organization in 2017 after working with them for many years. The nonprofit manages 20 national parks and protected areas in 11 countries, including Mozambique and Rwanda, per African Parks website. According to reports, the government of Rwanda has agreements with African Parks to manage Akanjara and Yangwe National Parks. The 20-year agreement signed in 2020 allowed the organization to manage Nyangwe National Parks, home to a quarter of Africa's primates, 13 species including chimpanzees, and the extremely rare hemlins and los monkeys. And that information was reported by the New York Times. The president's official Twitter account posted, President Kugami's received Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, who visited Rwanda as part of his work as president of African Parks. The government of Rwanda has agreements with African Parks to manage Akajira and Nyongwe National Parks. Prince Harry also took the time to visit the Kigali Genocide Memorial to pay respects to the victims of the 1994 Rwandan Genocide. At the site, Prince Harry praised Rwanda's incredible show of unity and resilience, saying, I am profoundly moved by what I've witnessed. What an incredible show of unity and resilience we now see. Thank you for showing us all the way to healing and forgiveness. You are setting an example across the world. The social media of the memorial shared those moments. Now on to archetypes. Architects First Podcast went live! <laughs> Our Duchess Megan's first podcast was with the GOAT Serena Williams and about her evolving from tennis. They also had the discussion about the misconceptions of ambition. The double standard in literally everything. <laughs> but we'll get to that much later. 
Anywho, the podcast was like listening to my best friends talking. It was so chill and wonderful and positive. (sighs) And we also got to hear a bit of Harry at the beginning. I wonder if he loves to hang out with Archie and Lizette. You know, doing the fun dad stuff. (laughs) But um, yes, the podcast felt like I was hanging out with my two amazing friends and listening to their experiences, even opening up about scary stories regarding their little ones. I felt Serena's pain when she was talking about baby Olympia breaking her wrist hours before her match. Oh my God, uh, uh, that was just, see how strong women are? Because, I mean, I probably would have fell apart. <laughs> you know, if that had happened to me, but i mean i'm sure she fell apart but you know how it is when we gotta like keep a a a brave face with everything and we just gotta you know keep it moving and that's what it like she did you know i mean but like her baby oh my god her little baby she fell off a little high chair and she broke her wrist and i was like hours before the match her match you know that that match where she wore that amazing bodysuit or the amazing that amazing cat suit. And of course the cat suit was helping her with her, you know, with her health issues. Like, I mean, she was going through it. I'm sure many of you know already what happened to her after she gave birth to Olympia. She almost lost her life. So in order to so in order to help her with, you know, her her circulation issues, you know, with the blood clots and everything, she had to wear that, that bodysuit and the bodysuit helps. But of course, you know, there's just annoying, ignorant people who, I guess they must've saw that as, as some kind of like sexual rebellious things because just because she has the body to wear a cat suit like that, but it's, it, it goes it goes far beyond that. Yeah, but, and, and I think that from right, I remember, um, I think it was the French Open, they banned, they banned the cat suit. Talking about one must respect the game or something like that. It was utter BS to me. And I'm not even gonna deny, it was, it was the R word. It was straight up that. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure if like, you know, a Maria Sharapova, if she wore something like that, they would have been praising it up and down, you know, on her on her social media page. But of course, Nike had her back because they were in the collaboration with Serena's uh, cat suits that help with her circulation and uh, blood clot blood clot issues. And I mean, I would never forget that. That was um, they posted on her social media. I remember it was. It was uh, you can take the superhero out of her costume. But you can never take away her superpowers. Hashtag just do it. And I, I love that. <laughs> I thought that was just wonderful. Even after the utter disrespect that the tennis organization has pretty much given to the GOAT, Serena Williams. Like, respect this woman. I mean, it took them, it took them like, it took them years to even pay her fairly compared to the other women tennis players who were not even great (laughs) and i pretty much mentioned one of them already the ones who aren't so great but quote unquote i guess is this ideal beauty to some people's standards i remember her being like the top paying tennis player and i'm like for what anywho that's we're not talking about (laughs) we're just gonna uh go back to the um to the subject but that's just like utter disrespect though. Like this woman was just working her butt off. And we know that the reason why she wasn't the top paying tennis player at that time because well, because of her beautiful skin color, obviously. But of course she eventually received her flowers and became the top paying female athlete, you know, in the leaderboard list when she was, um, I'm not sure if she's still number one. She's probably number two now. I think uh, Naomi Osaka's number one. But either way, she got her flowers eventually. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we're not even going to get to the part where tennis used to 
penalize women for pregnancy leave can you believe that like the tennis oh my god the utter disrespect to women like just for getting pregnant now i don't she didn't get penalized for it but there was a time where it that was a thing um the u.s open i'm I'm trying to like remember, I remember reading something like that. Like they said they were no longer penalized women for maternity leave. And I think that was because of um, of Serena Williams. Like Serena Williams, and she left to have her baby. But I shouldn't be surprised that the tennis organization and many like the many opens like French Open, the US Open, all of them, Wimbledon, every, all of them they all have like this penalizing women for like the most natural thing that can happen to them and that's pregnancy so <laughs> i mean why were you penalize someone for giving life and taking care of that life i that just uh, it's mind-boggling Ugh, so irritating <laughs> but it now seems as if they're heading at the right direction for the women and they're definitely giving Serena her flowers as you know as she deserves and of course Megan shared her story you know regarding baby Archie oh my gosh and that fire oh it's horrifying that's really that was scary I the power of women oh my gosh so strong how do they both handle their How they both handled their situations because, oh my gosh, just so scary. I'm so grateful for that nanny who thought, you know what, I'm just gonna hold Archie a little longer. And, you know what, I'm just gonna hold Archie a little longer. And can you imagine if she didn't? And I'm not gonna lie. And it, just like with the incidents with Serena, I. This is okay. This is going to be allegedly just in case. I think that it was a setup. It was a setup. Mm -hmm. I said it. I said it. And I said allegedly. Um, but this is m me thinking this. I think it was a setup. I, I mean, you, you can't put anything past the British royal family. Can you imagine her, can you imagine a nanny being an older English woman who is loyal to the royal family? And I'm not saying all would be that way, but I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's a reason why, you know, both Harry and Meghan decided on an African woman to be Archie's nanny. But I'm pretty sure that the first one, they had to fire her because of I don't know what she did, but it definitely, she got fired. <laughs> she did something that she wasn't supposed to do. And um, so it makes sense. I totally understand. I don't know. Things happen for a reason. And all I know is that that nanny, is, she's a blessing. She is a blessing. She's an angel. Thank you so much for protecting Archie. Because any other nanny from that establishment probably would have turned a blind eye to that. Once she smelled smoke or saw some fire, she would have looked, walked away, and act, and pretended as if she hadn't seen anything. Just how some people work, just how some people think and, and act. That's just how I feel. So we really appreciate Nanny Lauren. She, was definitely the angel that Archie needed at that time. So yeah, grateful for that. So I um, <clears throat> I had to listen to the podcast all the way through a second time because the first time I was working and um, I was working, <laughs> you know, I, I work at home as many of you know. And uh, so yeah, I was, I was doing that and uh, the original plan for Tuesday, and that's why I was <laughs> doing the podcast then, was Wednesday. So 
to the original plan for Tuesday was to do a short podcast regarding Harry and his African park trips. And um, all of a sudden, while I was doing that, like I got these notifications about about the archetype podcast and i'm like oh my gosh i have to listen to this and i was about to um you know start you know get off the break and get back to the work and so i was like okay i guess i have to pause this podcast and delay it again which i hate to do so i have to delay it and um and just play the podcast i had spotify anyway because i actually like spotify so i'm so i turned on the spotify i turned that particular podcast on and, and then I enjoyed it. But that podcast, oh my gosh! And a, and a day, it's just like today. It's beautiful, bright, sunny day. Beautiful, comfortable. I have the fan on, uh, running in the background. I have my windows open. So it's chef's kiss. Um, unless it's like neighbors walking or dogs probably wondering, who is that lady talking to? <laughs> Where is that voice coming from? <laughs> Perfect day ever. Congratulations to our Princess Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. As many as you all know, I live in positivity and that includes facing the reality of life. The topic of the podcast involved the double standard that women had to face. Um, it just seems as though women can't win. Like, and this is just me on my soapbox. <laughs> it seems as though women can't win. Like, we as women can be ambitious without being called a diva, the B word, crazy, too emotional, cold, um, as Megan said, climber, I, I say social climber. Heck, um, they've called Megan the, the, some weird name, the brazen hussy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Remember that? Oh my gosh. And I, I believe some squatties use that as their usernames as well. <laughs> but yeah, like just ugh, a list of names. Like, I don't see anything wrong with being ambitious. That's weird to put it as a negative for women. But yeah, it's, I mean, that's something that insecure men would do. So, I mean, I can relate to them. I, I can't relate to insecure guys. Sorry, insecure men. I can't relate. It also explains why some want to take away our rights. You know, working hard is it like a taboo or a sin to the world of women? <laughs> and it's 2022. Why is this even allowed? I mean, men can say and do something without any fault, and then yet women can't. And then what makes it even more crazy is that there are women, other women who actually agree with this type of stuff. Like they go along with, with these insecure men and well, they criticize women as well. Like, like oh my God, we, <laughs> we can't win. This is so crazy. And then uh, Megan spoke with Dr. Laura Cray, who is a UC Berkeley professor and expert on gender in the workplace. What she spoke on reminded me of this incident that happened with Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> I would, that's, it's, there's interviews or quotes or things that you can never forget. Well, that's one of them uh, with Oprah, what she experienced back. Back in the 70s or 80s, um, I'm not sure, I think it's more towards the 70s because I think when she was talking about it, when I read it, I think I've seen it in an article. And then the picture they show she had an afro, so I know there were afros in the 70s, but I think there were afros in the 80s too, like the beginning of the 80s, right? Like the early 80s, you know, like the, trans the transitional uh, new decade, like the new year of the decade, like, things sort of like transition over slightly before it goes like out of style phase away so anywho um back in the 70s or 80s <laughs> oprah was a news anchor uh, for baltimore a baltimore news station and and uh, i'm not sure if i watched this or if i read it because if i read it i would 
I'm, it's the same thing as watching because when I read things, it, you just picture the scenario in your head just so vividly. And that was like, that was one of the, the um, it was one of the memories. Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm not even sure if I read it in an article or seen it on a video. I'm just, I'm leaning more towards the article. Um, so anyway, um, so it was back in the late 70s um it was back when she was a newswoman in baltimore a news anchor in baltimore and she found out her male co-worker was actually making more money than her his salary his salary was a lot higher than hers and they were working the same job the same position the same hours um, i'm probably wouldn't be surprised if she was working longer hours than him but well there, there he was making a lot more than her she was working just as hard as her male co-worker. I mean, they had the same position, the same exact position and stuff. He was getting paid more. So she went to her boss and of course he had an excuse for this. Um, let me read the exact quotes from what Oprah shared in this um, interview because I just actually, I just found it and I knew this actually existed. <laughs> okay, so this is what she said that her boss t told her. Why should you make as much money as he? One for costs. He has children. Do you have children? The boss asks. And you know her answer already. <laughs> she said no. So the boss went on with more excuses and mansplaining that, well, he has to pay more. Well, he has to pay for college certifications. He owns his own home. Do you own your own home? Then he went on to ask, so tell me, why do you need the same amount of money? And that was the moment Oprah realized that she wasn't being taken seriously, even by her boss and the leadership of the company. So her response, thank you for your time, and left that same day. Good for her. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if she left her job that day. I just, I think she left his office because she wasn't taking her seriously and I mean, unfortunately, at, during that time in the 70s, things were changing, but it wasn't changing quick enough. So yeah, um, so um, things things were changing, but just not quick enough. And she couldn't just file a lawsuit against the guy. But she was right; she'll definitely lose. So she, I mean, she knew she wasn't being seen as a, an equal or as a human being. So. She eventually became one of the most successful and wealthiest women of our time in the world. Actually, I should say the most wealthiest and successful woman in the world. And look at her now. She's doing good. <laughs> but Oprah is one of the lucky ones in this scenario. Let's think about another scenario. You know, one in involving moms. Particularly the single moms. You know, the ones... You know, their income is the only thing that pays for everything. And yet, okay, say if she was in a, in a similar scenario with Oprah and right? She has her own home. She has her own car. She's a single mom of, of, of two, maybe one, two, three children. It, it really doesn't matter. She's a single mom. So she's pretty much, she's holding the fort down or holding down a fort, whatever that saying is. And she goes to the boss and she's, says the exact same thing you know she asks the exact same question and I believe that his excuse would be the exact same thing but it would probably probably be phrased along the other lines as judgmental because she's a single mother first of all without even thinking about why she's a single mother <laughs> you know I mean, the husband could no longer be on this earth or she had to leave to protect her children and herself but or you know just it just didn't work out he just didn't want anything to do with them so i mean but i i honestly think just based on his jerk's answer he would have been he would have been mansplaining to her as well on why she shouldn't be paid the same way either and it's like okay yes i own my own home i own my own car i take care of all my children by myself i think that i need just as much money as as my co-worker but of course like like i mentioned before 
he would have mansplained you know his way uh, out of that as well so and it's unfortunate that they didn't have you know a, she couldn't go to hr about it either because it would have mansplained that to her as well it's most likely a man a, a man in charge of that like i said i don't know who was in charge of hr to that position but i've most likely it's most likely a man sorry to say that so yeah okay so back to the positive uh i love that through serena we learned that kevin costner is a fellow compton person is a fellow compton knight I, I don't know what people in compton call themselves i'm just <laughs> he's from compton as well which is cool um i love their little silly moments together joking around i just love it it's like listening to best friends just listening to your girlfriends just talking hanging out with your girlfriends it was just i just love the entire vibe of that podcast and like I mentioned before, we got to hear Harry and it was just so cool. I, I loved it. It was fun. I, I'm i looking forward to next week's podcast. That is just that was amazing. I can't wait to hear from Mariah Carey. Like, I, I wonder if I wonder if Megan and Mariah Carey, are they like are they one of her close friends? No. Or is she like one of the people that she never met? I don't know like I honestly think that Mariah Carey already contacted Megan or Megan contacted Mariah I honestly think that they are they're already friends but if if they're not then I am I'm surprised you know (laughs) but yeah I'm definitely looking forward to that interview and and um it's going to be very emotional I'm going to be watching Serena's final match I want to watch the entire U.S. Open of Serena, and I really hope she wins. That would be amazing. So, wouldn't that be amazing though if she like won the U.S. Open at her last match? That would that would be beautiful. But I mean, I understand why she wants to leave. She explained, you know, she wants to grow her family. Uh, in an article with um, with Vogue. Um, Serena shared that you know, Olympia wants to be a big sister. That's, and she wants to be a big sister to her, a baby sister. So she doesn't want a baby brother. She wants a baby sister. <laughs> I thought that was so cute and hilarious. Like just having a baby sister, just just us girls. <laughs> baby brothers are nice too. They're good, but she doesn't know that yet until she, if, unless that happens. Until that happens. And Serena's idea of, of being pregnant, like she enjoyed her pregnancy. And then I, I thought, well, naturally, of course, I mean, a lot of a lot of women, a lot of athletic women in particular, they, like their pregnancies are always very easy and just beautiful and the stomach growing. And, and then Megan, <laughs> she, I guess it was, I guess it was kind of the opposite for Megan for her pregnancies. <laughs> She's just... It just blow up and it just water around, tired. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. It's, I just love that both of their experiences, women can relate. Like there's women who had wonderful, amazingly sexy, beautiful pregnancies, while other women didn't feel too beautiful and sexy. They felt bloated, heavy, and um, and exhausted. So. <laughs> And I love that they're both California girls, Cali girls, Golden State girls. I should do a Golden State, uh, like an updated Golden State video with both of them. That'd be so cool. Hmm, idea. Anywho, the podcast was, I give it like 10 out of 10 stars. I don't know how to, that's my rating, 10 out of 10 stars. Or if they have a five star system, five out of five stars. It was perfect. It was, as I mentioned earlier, it was chef. It was chef's kiss. I really enjoyed it. And is uh, see, and of course, our podcast is number one in many spots, or in the top three, or top five, but mainly number one. And so, congratulations on that. 
and lovers and haters are listening to her. So, you creepy trolls, I know creepy trolls are gonna be commenting on my thing. Cause I've, trust me guys, I don't know if you get notice or not. <laughs> I mainly get trolls overnight. This is this so creepy how they just try to just sneak up in there in the middle of the night and I'm actually up in the middle of the night because I I can't really sleep like that well because I sleep early so I, I wake up in the middle of the night and I see like the weird creepy obsessed comments about our girl I'm like okay hi channel you're blocked <laughs> you don't no longer have to worry about seeing anything with someone you're supposed to hate I honestly think that these trolls just they love Megan more than we do <laughs> they, they love her more than us their, their obsession is real just as I mentioned in the past podcast their obsession is real with them with, with them <sighs> it was it is a beautiful podcast and um I just love how both girls just had different things at the point different points of their lives like and I know 11 year old Megan at the time felt so empowered and so proud and satisfied to have been able to successfully convince Proctor and Gimlin to change their ad. I, I just know that she gave herself a huge pat on the back or someone probably suggested that she do it. <laughs> and I also love that she uh, also said that if you see something you don't like on television or anyone else, write letters and send it to the right people and you can really make a difference for not just for yourself, but for lots of other people. <laughs> I thought that that was just so sweet and she was absolutely right. She definitely, uh, her, her beautiful penmanship, her beautiful, her uh, powerful letter definitely made a change for that ad. And then Serena Williams, you know, 11 year old version of her, they asked her like what tennis player that she wants to be like when she grows up. And her amazing answer was, I like other people to be like me. Like, oh my gosh, that's, I love that. Children really, uh, they really, um, really are very confident. I love it. And Serena was definitely right that we, we shouldn't give our children our fears. We shouldn't put our fears into our children. You know, let them, you know, let them discover things. Let them be open-minded. Of course, be cautious on some things, but you know what I mean. Don't put your fears into your children. So I love that as well. And yeah, amazing podcast. I look forward to next week's podcast as well. And we have some breaking news. Just like yesterday when I was doing the podcast. <laughs> this time, it's the Sussex family. Um, they have a new addition to the family. And it's Princess Mama Mia the Beagle. Congratulations to the new addition. Guy and Pula. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's, the dog's name is Pula, right? I know Guy, but I always mess with Pula. So... According to LA Times, in less than two months, Mama Mia the Beagle went from rags to riches. Her changed life began in July when federal authorities rescued her along with 4,000 other beagles from overcrowded and unsanitary conditions at the Inveagle Breeding and Research Plant in Virginia. Her new home is a spawning estate in Montecito, where the seven-year-old dog will roam around in a lush seven-acre property. Her new owners? The Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The Duchess called me personally, said Shannon Keith, an animal rights attorney who ran the Beagle Freedom Project out in a low slung Valley Village house where she used to live. But Keith said at first she didn't realize who the VIP donor interested in the Beagle adoption was. She calls on myself with no caller ID and says, Hey Shannon, this is Megan, says Keith whose nonprofit organization rescues beagles and other dogs, as well as cats, pigs, horses, rabbits, goats, and sheep, most of which were used in the laboratory testing. We talked for 30 minutes and I thought, is this Megan Fox? <laughs> I'm sorry, that made me laugh because Megan Fox and the Duchess Megan sounds nothing I like. Okay. 
but it was Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, and her husband, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, who made an after-hours visit to the unassuming San Fernando Valley House this month. As the World Couple spokeswoman confirmed the visit to the Times, neither commented on the adoption. It was a no-photos affair, with two security guards joining Meghan and Harry in their quest for a furry family member. They played in the backyard with Mia, who has been transported with eight of her newborn puppies from Maryland, where the dogs have been taken after the Virginia rescue to Valley Village, but they did not want a puppy. The Duchess was holding Mia and was like, we're adopting her. She was like, no, we don't want a Christmas puppy. We want ones we can help who are older. Megan had a rescue beagle for many years. And when she saw the story about an illegal shutdown, she wanted to get involved, her spokeswoman told the Times. She knew puppies usually are easier to find homes for and wanted to help one of the older, more vulnerable canines. Mia's storybook ending follow a life at the Invigo plant described by the Apartment of Justice as a house of horrors. In a lawsuit filed in the federal courts against the company in May, authorities say beagles were, oh gosh. <sighs> I can't even read that. That is horrible. <sighs> Authorities say beagles were euthanized or left. That is horrible. Thank God that this horrid place is shut down for good because I I'm not I'm not, I'm not able to read anymore of that. I'm so sorry. <sighs> um and Legal, the second largest producer for dogs for medical research, breeds roughly 25% of the beagles used in medical and drug research in the U.S. The article goes on about the horror factory and their abuse and neglect to these poor animals. Oh my gosh. Ooh, that's, that's, a, that's a tough read. <laughs> if you're like an animal lover, uh, this, is, this is a trigger warning. <laughs> So, after the lawsuit was filed, Envigo agreed to release 4,000 beagles from the plant and shut down operations. The federal government and the company agreed to transfer the dogs to the Humane Society of the United States. The beagles are being moved to shelters or groups such as the Beagle Freedom Project, which places the dogs in foster homes for rehabilitation before finding their forever homes. As the Duke and Duchess prepare to leave the Valley Village house with the newest four-leg member of the House of Windsor, Harry paused. Well, we can't leave yet because there's something in that back house she needs. Does she have a favorite toy or something? The royals made their way back and found a box filled with toys. They flipped it over and Mia grabbed a fox toy she had played with during her cross-country trip from Maryland after leaving in Vigo. And with that, the Duke, the Duchess, and their dog left the valley. Okay, now we can go home, Harry said. And Mia lived happily ever after. <laughs> well, I highly recommend adopting or considering adopting a rescue pet. Um, I'm actually in the process of adopting a rescue, a rescue kitten. It's going to be... Um, adopting some really soon i'm so excited about that uh they're so sweet um the next time i see them i'm going to take pictures of them and then show them in the community these are so adorable um yeah they're they're two babies kittens and they're going to be taking a lot of my time and i'm still going to have time to report all things sussex so um getting back to what i'm saying is i'm going to be adopting two baby kittens i'm so excited about that I, I love all animals. I love dogs. I love birds. I love I love all animals. I'm, I'm not really a fan of mice. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really like them. I don't know. I just, I don't know. They just creep me out. But I, I do love cats. I love cats. They're like on the top of the pyramid for me. They're on the top of the list. I've always loved cats. They're the most cutest and they're feisty and then it's very sweet and they also leave you alone you don't want to be bothered and worry about like a cat just jumping on you like just barking you to go outside when it's storming outside and just cat looking out at the window like oh okay go back to sleep <laughs> like oh good 
no i'm just joking but well actually yeah cats are like that but anywho that's that's uh, i'm i'm excited about that so and i follow a lot of rescue animal social media pages and know some who've adopted rescue dogs and cats and let me just tell you that they are the sweetest fur babies oh my goodness it's as if they appreciate this opportunity for a better life you know of love and and belly rubs <laughs> it's so cute i just love it you can read the rest of the article if you haven't already it is in the description box along with my other sources for this podcast the Duke of Sussex helped lead his team to victory at the Cinnable Polo Cup in Aspen, Colorado on Thursday, people confirms. The charity match benefit is Cinnable. The organization Harry founded in 2006 with Prince Sesu of Lesotho to have children in Africa affected by poverty, inequality, and other illnesses. Prince Harry rose the team Cinnable beside Nacho and others at the Aspen Valley Polo Club. Ahead of the event, Figueroa shared an Instagram tribute celebrating Cinnable, posting a photo of he and Harry riding side by side. I love playing with you, and even more if we are raising money for this great cause. Thank you to everyone supporting this event today at the Aspen Valley Polo Club, the 45-year-old Argentinian polo player wrote. In a separate post, Cinema confirmed that the two men would ride in a round robin style tournament against Royal Salutes and the U.S. Polo Association. This is the second year in a row that the charity match has taken place near Aspen, not too far from Prince Harry and Princess Meghan's home in California, where they relocated in 2020. During his surprise appearance at the 2021 event, the prince pledged $1.5 million of the proceeds from his forthcoming memoir to the charity. This is one of the several donations I plan to make to charitable organizations and I'm grateful to be able to give back in this way for the children and communities who gratefully need it. Harry said in a statement back in 2021. The Duke of Sussex has also competed at the Santa Barbara Polo Club in recent months with Figueres on a team called Los Padres, which means the fathers or parents in Spanish. Megan often cheered on her husband from the sidelines and has even dubbed herself a wife, according to Delfina, Nacho's wife. M, looking forward to many more of these times with you and H. Getting to spend time together over these two months was so special. She wrote in an Instagram post in June. I wish everyone knew you the way you are. My sister, heart. Now, my fellow wife, <laughs> genius of you to come up with this. I love that friendship. <laughs> and speaking of lovely friendships, I love Harry and Nacho's brotherhood. He's also a fellow squatty. <laughs> Saying, my wife and I have known Harry for a very long time. I know firsthand how much he wanted to have a family. He found an amazing teammate or partner in Megan. They love each other very much. Their children are lovely. Figueres also competed alongside Harry this season on the Los Padres team at the Santa Barbara Polo Club. Being able to be with them for the last two months only made me happier. Seeing them be a lovely family with their children and their dogs, and that's really what he always wanted. I'm very happy for them. Figueres met Prince Harry at a charity match benefiting Senabale. From day one, I saw how committed he was to his charity. That's for 15 years, I've been to Losuto with him a few times and I've seen what great work the charity does and how important it is for a lot of kids. How committed he is and how much he really cares about it. As mentioned earlier, Prince Harry and Prince Seisu of Lesotho co-founded the organization. My dear friend Prince Seisu and I founded Sintabale 16 years ago in honor of our mothers with a mission to support many of the most vulnerable young people on the planet and to give them care and help so that they can thrive. In Seisutu, 
the language of Basutu, the word Sintabale means forget me not. He continued, next week is the 25th anniversary of my mother's death and she most certainly will never be forgotten. I want it to be a day filled with memories of her incredible work and love for the way that she did it. I want it to be a day to share the spirit of my mom with my family, with my children, who I wish could have met her, he added, referencing to Archie and daughter Lilibeth, whom he shares with his wife, Princess Megan. Every day, I hope to do her proud. I have a feeling that your mother is proudly smiling down at you from heaven. Now back to Nacho on his brother Harry. Being able to play with him for two months in a real competition with the Los Padres team was a dream come true for me. And maybe for him too. We should ask him. <laughs> we got to spend a lot of time together on the field all filled with our families. We really bonded more than we have ever bonded before, being able to be with him so much. It doesn't hurt that Prince Harry is a talented polo player. He's very competitive, says Figueres. He plays very well. He rides very well. It's an honor to be his teammate. I love their brotherhood. I have all the links to all the sources I've used for this entire video the entire podcast whatever you want to call it i have all the links so that if you're interested in reading any of the articles which they're all amazingly good go check them out i hope you all have a beautiful weekend filled with blue skies sunshines with positive vibes i'd like to thank you for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and hit that bell my name is Deanna, and you are watching Thriving with the Sassistance. Talk to you soon.